Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome VP Experiences Airbnb, Joe Zede, in discussion with Skift Senior Hospitality Editor, Diana Ting. Um, so Jobot, as he's known at Airbnb. Yes, they call me Jobot, like the robot. <laughs> yes, and throughout the valley and the industry at whole, um, has the distinction of being Airbnb's longest tenured employee. Uh, Jobot joined Airbnb in 2010 as a software engineer, and in 2017 he became the head of Airbnb experiences. Uh, again, I want to remind the audience to please feel free to submit any questions that you have for Jobot using slido.com slash skift or by using our event app. Um, so Jobot, thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, I wanted to ask you, you've been at Airbnb for quite some time. Almost nine years, yeah. Yes. <laughs> so when the idea for what would eventually become experiences was first floated around at the company, what were your immediate thoughts? Like, and how did that sort of come to mind even? Uh, I mean, uh, uh, several years ago, we had this idea that, you know, what's Airbnb going to do next? Are we going to do, you know, car sharing, drill sharing? We, you know, thought a lot about it. And we thought Airbnb should provide the end-to-end -end trip, all parts of travel. So not just the homes, but also what you do. And if you think about even some of the first times even the founders hosted on Airbnb, a lot of those things were actually experiences where we uh, really brought people into the community. We really you know, showed them around and stuff like that. And a lot of our hosts were already doing this, so it kind of just seemed very natural. In fact, it even seemed uh, even more easy and more natural than the original concept of staying in a, someone's home. Mm -hmm. Did you ever think that you would be the head of this product? No. I, I, I mean, I, in a previous life, I was a research scientist, a scientist, so like, I never thought I'd be in the travel industry, but it's really fun. <laughs> well, what sort of prompted Airbnb to, to name you head of experiences, or how did you sort of get there? Uh, well, so, as you mentioned, I started as a software engineer uh, when we were just nine employees uh, working out of an apartment. Mm -hmm. Um, and over time, I transitioned to product. I led product management for about five or six years. Mm -hmm. And during that time was when we were really deciding how can we move beyond homes into other stuff. And uh, Brian, our CEO, and I put a little team together and we started working on this idea of what, is it, what would it be like to design the perfect trip for somebody from end to end. And from that um, uh, came experiences. And they originally started as longer, multi-day right. experiences. There were the two different types, or the yeah. immersions, and then... Yeah, immersions were two to three day trips that, um, you know, maybe you go to France, you take a perfume class for two days, or you go to LA and do, uh, you know, astrophotography for two days. More like package travel. Almost. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, but they, uh, you know, they didn't really resonate out of the gate with our consumers, and so we quickly moved to shorter, snackable experiences and kind of, um, kind of just blew up. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I also have heard that you like to take a lot of experiences yourself. I do. So um, yeah. I wanted to ask you, what have been some of your most favorite or you know most memorable ones? So I, I've taken probably over a hundred experiences, uh, and I, I get asked that question a lot. But I can never say it globally. I kind of have to pick a city and then say what, what are my favorites. Um, I even a couple of days ago I was in Barcelona. One of my favorite things was I met up with this street artist who has a license to do street art in certain parts of the city, and he taught me how to use spray paint and how to like make a mural. And I, I, I don't think of myself as a very artistic person, so I was so proud of my little drawing that I did on the wall. Mm -hmm. It was you know, taking tons and tons and tons of photos of it, so that was super cool. You know, in LA, I really enjoyed uh, you know, learning how to fly an airplane. So you could see the Hollywood sign from the ground, or you could see it from the air while you're getting your first flying lesson, which I thought was really fun. And when you're taking these experiences, what are you looking for? Like, you know, this is obviously, you're the head of this, this business product, so what, what, are, what do you pay attention to? What are you noticing? What are you seeing? Um, where are you seeing areas for improvement or? Yeah, I, I, really the most important thing we care about with experiences is quality. And that's one of the ways that we see ourselves completely different than what's in the industry. Uh, every experience gets fully vetted on our platform. And we look for really three things. We look for, is the host an expert? Can they provide you really deep access? And uh, you know, can they create the sense of human connection, the kind of thing that's the fundamental you know, Airbnb-ness? And um, another example in Los Angeles, which I love, is this guy is a Foley artist, and he makes sound effects for movies. Most people don't even know this exists. And you know, he's an expert. He's maybe one of 30 people in Hollywood that can actually do this. And he, you have access to his you know, really amazing home studio where he records things for TV shows like Orange is the New Black. And then, 
he makes it really fun, like that human connection part. You shoot a film together, you edit it together, you add the sounds together. And like, that's the kind of thing we're looking for in, um, in all of our experiences. Great. Um, now, I also wanted to ask you, you know, tourism activities are notoriously known for being uh, one of the travel sectors that's still very fragmented, still very logistically kind of a nightmare. How, how does Airbnb sort of try to attempt to overcome these challenges in the sector or in this space specifically? Um, we think a lot about how to, how to uh, innovate in the offline world. We, we think we have a platform that makes travel really easy. We want the entire Airbnb platform to be really easy to book. Uh, but what we, what we really want to focus on is what I was talking about earlier, uniqueness, quality, mm -hmm. doing things that people have never sort of seen before. Right. Um, and so we have a lot of experiences that are taught by somewhat famous people. Like one experience I've done in New York is with a multi-time female boxing champion, world champion. And you really can't get these kinds of things really anywhere else. And so we mm -hmm. focus a lot on how to make that offline experience. And we have over a decade of experience making these things really easy to book. Mm -hmm. I mean, you've also scaled experiences pretty dramatically. So when, it, when Airbnb trips, as it was known then, first launched in 2016, there was just 500? 500, 500 experiences, yeah. Right, and now there's 30,000, more than 30,000? 30, 30,000, and we also scaled from 12 cities into now we're over, in a thou we're in over a thousand cities. Right, yeah. So how, how did you manage to scale that, um, that dramatically in just three years? Uh, well, I mean, we had a lot of experience doing this mm -hmm. from uh, the homes business. The experiences business is already bigger than homes was when I started mm -hmm. at Airbnb. And so we've seen a lot of, you know, how to do it. Um, I think that we found ways to really uh, scale quality. And that's the, that's the big challenge is how do you keep growing? How do you monitor the quality? Or, like, I know, I know the review system yeah. works similarly for experiences as it does for homes. But, like, how do you really make sure that the quality is always at the, the standard that you want it to be? You know, we, we, have a, we have a vetting process. But behind the scenes, we're also really developing a science around quality. We're deeply trying to understand you know, what makes something really memorable. I think when you know, people come to a city, they have a bunch, they have a checklist. I gotta go to this monument, I gotta go see this thing, this landmark, and then nothing really happens to them. It doesn't really change their perspective of, of that culture. And we have a much deeper philosophy, which is, okay, well, how can we really deeply connect you? We, we, we spend a lot of time um, trying to turn that into a science and trying to turn it into a way that we can, through our review system and through our vetting and mm -hmm. through ourselves, you know, testing experiences, like how do we really make sure we uh, amplify what makes an experience great? Right. Another thing I wanted to ask you about is that, you know, some new stats came out this morning about um, the experiences business, and I think it was nearly um, seven times more bookings this year, in 2018 over 2017. Um, but I still wonder, do you still think that people often just think of Airbnb for home sharing versus experiences? And like, has it been a challenge to sort of open people's eyes up to the fact that they can book an Airbnb experience? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, we're really excited about the growth. I mean, mm -hmm. seven, seven, nearly 7x growth last year. Uh, you know, and as mentioned, to uh, 30,000 experiences in a thousand cities. Um, we're, you, you know, Airbnb is a noun and a verb for a place to stay. That being said, this idea of personal hospitality and this idea that, oh, well, it doesn't, doesn't have to just be I have to have a space, I could also have a passion that I could provide. That's like really easy, I think, for people to understand. And I think it's really natural, it's a really natural extension for us. Who do you sort of see as your competitors? Or do you think, do you see yourself sort of competing against other brands like, you know, Get Your Guide or Viator? Or, you know, who, who is your competitor in the experiences space? I, I think of experiences as much, much bigger than just tours and activities. And we think of Airbnb experiences as way bigger than just tours and activities. I mean, the experience economy, it's, it's, it's coming, it's a real thing. It's, your, you know, your monitor, yeah. yeah, said it's going to be, you know, eight trillion dollar market by the, mm -hmm. by next year. Like that's a really gigantic market, and we don't see ourselves just as tours and activities. We have, like, lots of food experiences, and we have animal experiences, and we have, you know, things that we're starting to see locals even do. And you know, we're in, and to that end, we're starting to build an organization that has that domain expertise. So we've hired a head of food, and we've hired a head of animals, and we've hired a head of entertainment, mm -hmm. um, just to make sure we can really have super high quality in those, in those markets. Mm -hmm. Where do you see experiences relating to that larger vision of Airbnb being this like end-to-end -end platform? And how does experiences really connect to you know, the core homes business, but also the other businesses that, that Airbnb sort of seems to be 
exploring like transportation or you know the, the recent investments in companies like Hotel Tonight or Oyo and Lyric and and so on and so forth. Yeah, I, I mean we we have a sort of an internal mantra which is like we want to be a really easy place to book, and that's sort of the technology side of it. Um, but really what we think makes travel special is people, is people-to-people -people connection. That's what made our homes really special. That's what makes experiences special. And you know, everything we do, we want to have some element of you're connecting with a local. And even when you're traveling in a home, if you're not, even if the host is not there, you're still you know, connecting with their space. And I, and I think you're seeing uh, the city through the eyes of a local. And that's kind of the thing that will always tie this entire platform together. Right. It's definitely one thing to sort of um, have a host who hosts you in their home, or, um, but it's also another thing to have a host who kind of leads you on a tour and activity. And I was wondering, with the experiences hosts in particular, what do you do to really ensure that, that Airbnb has a good relationship with them, that they feel you know, valued, that, um, but that you're also you know, ensuring the quality of, of the, the tours that they're leading? Um, what, what's that relationship like and how yeah, you manage it? And this is something we also learned from, from our homes business, mm -hmm. is we really focus on community and getting to know our community. Uh, like I mentioned, I do, I've done, I do about one experience a week if I can. I, I do it in my own city if, I, if I'm not traveling. And that's, that's one level, we get to know our host really well, but we also really invest in, the, in community. Like, so right before I went to Barcelona, I was in LA for a host summit where we have a bunch of hosts that come to one place and we share you know, pr best practices and tips, but it's even better is to see hosts share practices and tips with each other. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and we find that that really creates a lot of, a lot of magic and a lot of you know, helping each other scale. What are some of their biggest concerns from the host perspective? Um, I, you know, I, I think that they also want to make sure that we have super high quality as we grow. I mean, I think they all feel like they're part of something really special. And, you know, and we've been growing very, very fast. We grew, as I mentioned, 7x, 7x last year. They see it too, and they just want to make sure that as we grow, that we'll you know, keep our commitment to really high quality. Mm -hmm. Would you say that quality is probably one of the biggest challenges that the experiences business faces, or what are some other challenges? Well, I mean, qual quality is a really interesting one because you know, we, we do vet a lot of our experiences, and not all of our experiences, not most experiences that come to the platform don't actually make it live the first time. We have to sometimes give them feedback about how to improve it. And so we, ha we have made that choice to say, we want to focus on something uh, really special that, that you can't do anywhere else. And what I'm hoping we, we create is something where uh, you, go, you get a chance to go deeper. And so instead of just having a tour of Fisherman's Wharf, which is like a very, very you know, touristy place in San mm -hmm. Francisco, we have the fishmonger's view of Fisherman's Wharf, where someone mm -hmm. takes you behind the scenes into the commercial fisheries and you're standing in freezers where the commercial fisheries are you know, preparing the fish to sell. And it's just, we wanna really push um, our community to do stuff like that. And I think having that approach means that yeah, you're, gonna, you're gonna say no to a lot of stuff that, mm -hmm. that could be a lot easier to get on the platform. Right. How many people work on, on experiences alone at Airbnb? I know Airbnb is a very large company. Yeah. But like, how, how big would you say that, that, that business employs? Uh, so we don't, we, don't really, we don't really share that number, mm -hmm. but like right now, a lot of our focus is we've had, we have like people who manage markets, people who manage our cities. Mm -hmm. We're now focusing on people who manage passion categories. So mm -hmm. as I mentioned, like wellness uh, and food, animals. wellness, animals, and that stuff. Gotcha. Um, hey, you probably won't answer this question, but I'll ask it anyway. Um, what portion of Airbnb's revenues are generated by experiences today? Like, um, can you give a percentage maybe? And what do you hope that number to be in like five years, 10 years? So yeah, we, we don't really share those numbers, but I mean, I, I want to come back to ask. yeah, I, I understand. Uh, I want to come back to how big the opportunity mm -hmm. is, and in, you know, uh, what's potentially an eight trillion dollar industry. It's uh, and it's more than just tourism activities. It's potentially all spend and market while traveling. It's locals. It's it's gigantic, and we think this mm -hmm. is a very very big opportunity. Right. Yeah, definitely. Do you still do you feel like like myself and some of my colleagues at, at Skiff do that that tours and activities sort of like the next frontier or the next space in travel that's really ripe for reinvention and more innovation in the space? Or? Yeah, absolutely. And as I said, I think the innovation is less on okay, how do I make how do I book it in you know three yeah. seconds instead of five seconds. It's, that's not the innovation. I think the innovation is how can you take people much deeper and how can you give people things that they didn't even know existed like. Internally, we have this, uh, this Slack channel where we look at some of the most interesting stuff that's coming on the platform. So it's, it's, really, it's really fun to watch. So it's like, you can be a mermaid for a day. Like, how is that even possible? Like, <laughs> learn how to eat fire. Like, 
fly a World War II airplane. It, it's just like all these things never really existed, but now it's like come, a yeah specialization of it, right? Or yeah, it, 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 and we're not just niche stuff, but we have like you know very very broad. We have lots of food, and but I mean back to back to your question, it's not just travel that's going through this shift. It's it's the world is going through the shift away from things and more into experiences, and that's why it's a really special time. Uh, do you guys have any numbers on on sort of how many people? who are booking experiences are doing so when they travel versus locals or like what you know just to book an experience just because I have a free weekend and I I want to do something in, in my hometown or so we, we don't have numbers on that but it is I'm hearing it more and more and more mm -hmm. I'm hearing more people come and say oh yeah this makes a great date night this mm -hmm. makes a great thing to do with my kids and we're starting to see a lot of that and we're starting to see a lot of our home bookers uh, add more experiences and so in the last year a lot of our growth came from you know 3x more home bookers were also adding an experience and so it's resonating with them too and I like to think that they go and they travel and they try these experiences and they ask well couldn't I do this in my own home market especially if they're high quality and you know the answer is yes. Right. Okay. Interesting. Um, I think this is a question that a lot of people both within and outside of the travel industry are wondering and it's sort of they're trying to figure out how they can actually define what Airbnb is today. Um, uh, a lot of people seem puzzled about that. You know, a lot of people resort to just sort of saying it's a, a modern OTA or online travel agency. I, I was wondering, how do you define it? I, mean, I, I think of it as, a, as like a very human-centered company. Um, I mean, we really focus. I mean, yes, we do. You do accommodation bookings, and yes, we do now experience bookings. But the way I think about Airbnb is different than most companies. Is we really focus on that human-to-human -human, uh, connection and really empowering people. And um, in the economic empowerment that we can provide to hosts is great. And it's also not just big for homes, it's also great for experiences. Our average hosts on experiences that listen experiences makes you know, 2,500 a year, but we have hosts that are also making over $300,000 a year already on the platform. And so it's, a, it's, it's very financially empowering and it's a way for people to connect. And, one of the other things I'm really proud of is uh, we have these social impact experiences because mm -hmm. um, we also really believe in doing, you know, building, you know, fundamental good into our platform. And anytime we work with a nonprofit, we waive our fees. And the number of people that have had been exposed to uh, to social impact is, is is very large, especially for this early. We've already had, you know, 65,000 people take experiences that were connected to a nonprofit, and those are things they otherwise wouldn't have ex ex experienced. And we've given those nonprofits over four million dollars. And I think. Um, that kind of empowerment is, thank you. <laughs> that kind of empowerment is 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 really big, and it's and I'm, I, I take great pride that we don't take fees on that. Right, and that really ties into our, our overall forum theme about responsible travel. Absolutely. Um, how, how to define that? And I you know, like you know, Airbnb is sort of, in some instances, it's been lauded, um, and in some instances, it's been vilified for sort of its role in contributing to tourism in a variety of different markets. Uh, you know, sometimes it's a boon, sometimes. Airbnb is called the, you know, the instigator of over-tourism. Um, going forward, how do you sort of see how Airbnb can be even more of a steward for responsible travel and sort of mitigating those, those problems or challenges? Yeah, I mean, I think experiences is one example of that. Mm -hmm. I think experiences you know, have the power to unlock things within a city, but they also have the power to unlock new destinations. You know, uh, last year I was in Barcelona, one of my favorite experiences was two hours outside of the city center mm -hmm. and you you know you drove two hours out and you rode horses through medieval uh, a medieval landscape and you it's some of the most beautiful landscape I've ever seen in my life it's life-changing I think there wasn't a single tourist in sight and I think there are so many gems like that around the world that are just waiting to be unlocked mm -hmm. one other thing I've been noticing is that lately Airbnb has been making a lot of investments in a lot of different companies from, from Oyo to Lyric to Hotel Tonight, um, but a lot of them seem to be sort of tied to the core homes business. Should we expect any investments from the experiences side going forward? It's too early to, really to talk about it, but I mean, I want to come back to like how big this industry is mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, and how, long, how, how much of a long game we want to play here. So. You know, you can do the math from there. How long of a, a game do you want to play? I mean, I, I, I think, you know, coming back to how big that industry is, mm -hmm. I, I, think it, I think and how much the world is shifting to, uh, to experiences over goods, I, I think it's decades. Okay. Great. So we have some time for some audience questions. So I'm going to ask the, the top one here. Uh, what's the one message that you would like to send to the hotel industry, uh, considering this week's news regarding uh, 
you know, Marriott and, and home sharing or, you know, what, or what message would you want to send to the hotel industry overall? Uh, well, I, I'm, I don't really feel qualified to speak so much about the, our homes business. It's been a while since I've worked mm -hmm. on our homes business. Uh, from the experiences business, I'd love to have hotels send people on experiences. Partner. We'd love to work with, partner with hotels mm -hmm. to do that. And I think a lot of what you're seeing about some of our investments there is about us really partnering with, uh, with traditional accommodations. Right. Um, our next question is, are you making money on experiences? Has the experiences business become profitable? Um, we are investing really, really big in growth, and it's something, as I mentioned, we think this is a very long play, long game, and so we're going really big on growth. Okay. Um, how is Airbnb engaging with the wider industry, uh, including tourism boards and local governments? Um, we're really excited about this, especially on experiences. We've been partnering with many DMOs, and. Uh, and how to help unlock experiences in their destinations. And we even had a partnership with Visit Britain. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a partnership with the state of Utah in the United States. And uh, I'm finding that governments are really excited about experiences because it gives everyday people access to additional income. Right. Um, so there seems to be a lot missing for Airbnb to cover the full end-to-end -end experience. What new stuff will we see in, in 2019 and 2020? Uh, there's going to be uh, a lot so more. Transportation to, is one. We, we hired a head of transportation. Yes. Uh, I think even within these existing businesses like experiences, you'll see a lot from experiences. I mentioned, I mentioned a couple categories of experiences like food, but we think there's probably hundreds of subcategories of experiences that can each one sort of be reimagined. And mm -hmm. like a lot of those will feel like almost like distinct businesses. Um, and uh, you know, you've been seeing stuff like our magazine, you've been seeing, uh, the you know, media we, investments. Uh, and we had our, we had our um, you know, uh, movie premiere yesterday with Tribeca. Like, all that stuff is, uh, is kind of uh, the future. But at the end of the day, it's how do we tie together the best possible trip? And we think the best possible trip is one that almost changes you in some ways, transformative, as cliche as that sounds. Yeah, one thing I was wondering about is, um, have you, has Resi been sort of connected into experiences and somehow with the, the restaurant reservations, or is that still sort of its own entity? It's, 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 a, it's a bit separate, uh, but we have done uh, like food experiences with Resi. They're really great at, uh, one thing I love about Resi is they're really great about knowing food very well, mm -hmm. um, and uh, they have restaurant reservations on our platform. Yeah. Um, so next question is, where is Airbnb on the air travel proposition, and do you foresee further tie-ups with loyalty programs, or do you have an update on the loyalty program for I, Airbnb? I have, nothing, I have nothing to say about <laughs> either of those. I, it's not really my wheelhouse. Okay. Um, I guess our next question, wow, there are quite a few questions. Um, what is the conversion rate on the Airbnb website? Uh, something I cannot share or know, <laughs> depending on what you're talking about, so sorry. Yeah, no okay, well this sort of yeah. leads to what we already discussed, but you know, how do you sort of see this, this new investment in the media division really contributing to the overall company strategy? Yeah, it, and and how, can, how can it be used specifically for the experiences business? I, I, think, it's, I think it's really, really early. On the experiences side, We've been seeing that uh, that media is really, really great for experiences. I, I think, you know, check out our Instagram. We have some really beautiful, almost like mini documentaries that we can shoot around experiences because we have some of the most interesting people in the world. That that Foley artist I mentioned, we have a little like 90 minute Instagram TV uh, episode you can watch, sorry, 90, 90 second Instagram TV thing you can watch. And you know, we, you can watch something about going deep into the Cuban music scene. And we think that uh, content and experiences are really work very well together, and you'll probably see a lot more from us on that. Great. We well, can't wait to see that. And yeah. thank you so much, Joe, for joining us. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks. Thanks.